So the topic for today is timers and timing rates. Uh, these are uh, important components that are uh, applied almost in every other control circuit. Because you want things to um, work according to um, certain patterns. So timing relays are actually um, have various designs and are used, like I mentioned, to delay an operation or to control or create a certain sequence of operation. And mostly you want uh, a pattern that is repetitive, not to always be switching on and off uh, physically, but you program it and use timers to do the repetition for you. So if some operation is supposed to occur um, every uh, 10 hours or every five hours, you can use a timer in the control circuit and it's going to save you a lot of um, other designs in the circuit. So they've got functions which are cycle of operation, delaying uh, in starting or delaying in stopping uh, operations, time intervals, which I already mentioned. And what you see here mostly are the three common types of um, uh, timers that we have. We've got the solid state timing relay. You've got the pneumatic timing relay, which comes from the dashboard types. And then you've got the plug-in timing relay. So what are the terms that you need to understand when dealing with timers? Uh, first, you have to understand that um, there are about three terms that are critical in this area. One is the input voltage. So this is a control voltage that is applied to the terminals for the timer to start the process of delay or to start the process of sequencing or to start the process of um, initiating some timing action. Then apart from that, uh, you've got the trigger signal. Um, the trigger signal is used to initiate a unit after input voltage. Some timers are going to have voltage which is applied constantly, and then they'll need a trigger signal that can bring on the timer to start its counting uh, capacity or capability. And this trigger signal uh, uh, can be either a control switch or a power trigger, which is in form of um, a voltage signal. Then you have the load, or what we call the output, usually a mechanical device that makes the changes uh, in, in, in place of that moves the contacts to open or close. So these are the three important terms that you need to understand when you're dealing with the timer. There are various types of timers. Uh, you've got pneumatic. Pneumatic uh, implies, we'll look at it later on, implies the use of uh, air um, in, in operational movement. So anything that you hear, a word that, starts, that, that says pneumatic, it implies that there's air pressure or air being used. Anything that you hear hydraulic, then it means there's liquid being used to do the movement. Now, uh, some of the timers are pneumatic, and then you've got inductive timers that are based on the principle of flux decay. Um, then you've got capacitive timers that employ uh, the resistor capacitor circuits. This implies that um, you can have the timing being monitored or controlled by how long it will take for the capacitor to charge and how long it will take for the capacitor to discharge. So when the capacitor is charged, the resistors is eliminated or short-circuited from the circuit. Then as the, the resistor is brought back, the capacitor begins to discharge through uh, the resistor and that's a time decay. That's the timing that can be applied um, in some of the uh, timers. Then you've got relays that are timed by dashboards and many others. 
Now, a key important thing here to note is that from all these types of timers, what you are going to notice is that they are basically two timing um, actions that are mostly um, that occur. These are the on delay, what we call the on delay timer. These are timers or coils that um, get to react or begin to time once the device has been switched on or energized. So once the device has been switched on or energized, then uh, that timer begins to cut. Time, we call that type of particular timer an on delay timer, implying that it is operating once it is on. So this is where this term is coming from, on delay. Then at the instant when the coil uh, of a device or, or a timer is switched off, so this, this implies off, de-energized or switched off, and the timer begins to time, then we call such timers as off-delay timers. As off-delay timers. So you will notice quite a number of uh, these timers as we go as we go on. We start looking at the types of timers, and um, in particular, in this case, we start with the motor-driven timers. So as I mentioned, there are quite a number of timers. Now we look at them uh, one by one. So motor-driven timers usually use what we call uh, small synchronous clock timers um, that drive the timing action. So there's a mechanical connection to the clock which controls the contacts. So you have the design appears as follows, as you can see here, and then you've got the timer, the load, and you've got the contacts. And then um, this is the supply, so the live and the neutral. And what you have is that synchronous uh, motor, that small motor, who will maintain the sync of time as it rotates, there's a gear ratio that is put in place so that as it rotates, the arms of the clock or the, the clock timing itself is um, working as well. So the motor has to have continuous power supply. And then um, the advantages of these types of uh, timers is that they've got a very high repeat cycle. So like I was saying, uh, these uh, timers and the advantage that they have is that they are, they've got a very high repeat accuracy and also simple to, to adjust. You simply turn this knob for the time that you want uh, to use. Most of the applications for these timers is sprinklers um, and lighting. So you've seen a lot in stadiums, you've got those sprinklers that come out and start to sprinkle in the stadium. Uh, in most of these cases, they're using the synchronous or the motor-driven timers that are programmed to come on usually in the night to water the field uh, so that during the day, the water will have sunk in and people can play soccer properly. The other type of timers that um, exist is the dashboard timers. Among them um, is a pneumatic timer. So what you see here is a pneumatic timer. It's got an air bellow. So an air bellow is like uh, a tube that can hold air. And what happens is that um, if you look at this contact, so this contact is kept open by the pressure in this air bellow that is pushing onto the switch. But as this rod moves and pushes this uh, bellow against the spring, it's going to release the air out through this air inlet. It's going to release the air, and as it does so, the timing can be programmed either for off delay or for on delay. So the amount of time it will take for the air to escape or for the air to come in 
is the time that is taken uh, to achieve the timing cycle. So this is what we call uh, pneumatic air readers or air timers. And then the contact here, this is a um, circuit, these are the contacts where you connect to. So you may have normally open as well as normally closed contacts for your uh, operations. Then how do the dashboard timers operate? Uh, so the time delay, like I mentioned, is provided by the air bellows, which allow air in and out. And then uh, once the coil is energized or denergized, the timing begins, which allows the air to flow in or to flow out at a delayed period. Once um, that is done, the, the timing range can be from about 0 0.05 to about 180 seconds. And the accuracy is about 10%, uh, plus 10%, which is uh, relatively good. Then if we come to um, the application, these are widely used in industry for many reasons. Why? Uh, one, one of the reasons is that they are not uh, affected by the uh, atmospheric pressure. They are not affected by the ambient temperature. They're not affected by vibration, which may occur in places uh, like industries, like the mines where you've got open pit blasting. So every blast sends a huge vibration to the components. And if the components are not uh, durable, then they may lose their operation. OK. Then um, you've got the solid state timers as well. So the solid state timers uh, use electronic circuitry to provide the timing functions. So they may be digital or analog. And then uh, they may also use a resistor capacitor charge and discharge circuit to obtain the, bias, the, the time uh, base. Others use quartz clocks as the base. OK, so you have the contact to the load which is between C1 and C2. And then you've got an external trigger circuit, which when it's triggered, you've got um, a signal that begins to time, to close the, uh, the contact. And uh, in order to maintain the timing operations, solid state uh, timers must have constant power supply uh, to, to the unit. And in most cases, in order to not lose time, what these units have done is they've got a backup uh, battery um, that, uh, that retains the settings, the timing settings in the internal memory so that it's not lost. So like I mentioned, the connections provided uh, include the time contacts, C1 and C2, and then the voltage input L1, L2, um, which is L1 and L2. And then you've got the external trigger circuit, S1 and S2. And uh, the timed contacts can be applied or used as either on delay or off delay. That is, these time contacts can be applied if you desire an operation that requires it to be operated as, as an off delay, you can set it in that way and use the solid state timer um, in that sense. Then um, we've got multifunction timers. Uh, these multifunction timers are mostly uh, digital timers. Uh, that can have more than one timing sequence. So you've got a number of contacts that can perform various timing sequences. One may be bringing on and off um, a, a unit or uh, an instrument, and then you may have uh, another line or operation that is cyclic, meaning it's repetitive, bringing on an operation on and off at particular Plant times. And these usually are programmable. That's why we've included the, the PLCs uh, as well. So 
The POCs, what we call programmable logical controllers, um, one of the topics that we are going to cover in this course later on, and we'll learn how to program these POCs. So POCs are almost uh, similar to a, an industrial computer, which has an input, has memory, and has output, so input and output modules. And also, they do have a timer module. So that timer module can be used for various timing operations. And um, they are very robust and highly used in industry because POCs can withstand vibrations, can withstand uh, harsh environments as compared to other um, control devices in industry. So they are highly preferred in industry. And their timers can also be used to activate or deactivate uh, various devices in industry. And the advantages of the PLCs, or one of them is that they are very accurate and then uh, they have got um, a high repeatability, which means they can operate uh, for a long period doing one and the same uh, sequence or pattern. Then the most common type um, of PLC instructions is the on delay, which we call the time time on time uh, timer on delay, and the off delay timer, which we call the timer off, and then a retentive timer, which we call the RT off. And um, this is an example of uh, a PLC. So in this case, you've got the input module where you connect all the inputs. In this case, you the connection of the, uh, the supply, which is L1 and L2, and then you've got the pressure switch, which when the pressure increases, it operates. The program in here um, can be set or can be programmed or written in order to create a time delay to bring on this light. So once the pressure increases and this switch closes, for instance, then uh, this I3 contact is going to close and then activate the timing. That is the timing on. And then that will begin to count. After five seconds, you've got Q1, which is this output giving out the light, which the light then turns on. There are four basic timing functions that uh, one has to understand. And as we mentioned, uh, the common types, the common two functions have been the on delay and off delay. But then we also have what we call a, a one shot and a recycle. So a recycle is a cyclic operation where it is repetitive. So the on delay timer usually referred to as the um, DOE, which stands for delay on energize. As I mentioned, these timers energize or are switched on once uh, the circuit has been switched on or operated. And then they begin their timing uh, delay. Now, the on delay timers have got a standard symbol. So you notice that the arrows are pointing upwards. So these are the symbols. The arrows pointing upwards are indicative one of an on delay timer. So this is a normally open, uh, timed closed, and then a normally closed, timed open. What this implies is that this is normally closed, but when it is energized, it is going to time to open. It's going to, time after timing is going to open. This one, which is timed closed, implies that after the counting is done, it's going to close. So this should not be confused uh, on the on delay timer. So a simple circuit uh, is this one that you see here. You've got uh, line one and line two, you've got a switch, and then you've got an on delay timer that is programmed or set to 10 seconds. And these are the, its two switches. This is a timed 
closed, normally open timed closed, and this is a normally closed timed open. You've got load one and load two. What is going to happen is when you close this switch, once you close this switch, this timer is going to get energized and is going to begin its timing sequence. So once you close, you energize the circuit. For instance, the coil gets energized. The moment it gets energized, it begins to count 10 seconds. When 10 seconds occurs, it's going to close this circuit, bringing in load one, okay? Whereas for the other timed contact, what is going to happen is it's going to remain closed for 10 seconds that it is counting. So this will remain closed for 10 seconds. Thereafter, it is going to open and this load is going to switch off. So this load, load one is going to come on and load two is going to uh, come out. So this is the on-delay timing circuit and how it operates. So these uh, graphs should be easier to understand. Uh, we call these the timing uh, sequence graphs. So when you look at this one, you have the timing diagram, and then you have energized, which is the top part, and de-energized is the lower part. So here it is de-energized, meaning this switch is off, and from here it is switched on. That's when the timing sequence begins, which is the delay time. So this is going to delay to close, this is going to delay to open, and afterwards it's going to open. So this opens after 10 seconds, and this closes after seconds, until when you switch off the switch. Okay, so this is the operation of the on-delay timer. Then you also have the off-delay timer, uh, which is referred to as the DODE, which stands for Delay on De-Energize. This implies that this begins to delay the timing after it has been switched off. So the operation of the off delay timer is exactly the opposite of that of the on delay timer. When power is applied, um, the time contacts will change their state immediately. But then when power is switched off, that is when the timing action begins. Okay? So uh, if you look at this circuit, here you have got an off delay timer, meaning that once we press this switch, these are going to change instantly. The normally open timed open, this one is going to close instantly, and the normally open, normally close time close is going to open instantly. And what is going to happen is they will stay in that state until you switch off the switch. Okay, so when you switch off the switch, that's when the timing begins. The 10 seconds now time. So this, uh, which had been closed, was that timing, 10 seconds later is going to open. This one, which was opened, instantly we switched on, is going to time after 10 seconds is going to close. Okay, so this is the standard symbol for. Uh, off delay timer, and uh, this is the operation. Like I said, once the coil is energized, you've got TR1, which is open, instantly gets closed, okay, instantly gets closed, and then <clears throat> TR2 instantly opens, and it will stay open. Now, when you switch off, you de-energize. You see, this, this is the time when we switch off the switch. When you de-energize at this portion, at this moment, you've switched off, then the timing action begins. That's when the timer begins to time uh, off delay uh, timing. So this will remain closed until 10 seconds is done, then it will open. And for this one, it will remain open until 10 seconds is done, then it will close, it will return to its uh, normal status. So this is how you understand and read the timing uh, diagram. 
Okay. And then we go to the one short time. The one short timer, uh, usually momentary um, uh, timers that only activate once you are pushing them. So when, once you push the button, the moment there's a contact there, that's when the timer action will begin. The moment you let go, uh, when, once the timer action has stopped, then you have to again, it resets itself, you have to again press the initiate button. So this is what we call a one shot time. Um, so the input voltage must be applied before and during the time. And then uh, the, once the timer has been activated or initiated, it will remain energized during the time delay that it is programmed. So it will leave to keep on working, as you can see from the timing diagram, to keep on working until it has been um, stopped. Then it will reset and wait for another time that you initiate and then it will start its timing uh, action. That's the one short time. And then the recycle or recycle, recycling timer, uh, these timers operate on alternate um, periods between on and off. So they are called cycling, recycle timers or cyclic timers because they are set, you can set them on a symmetrical recycle time, which as you can see, the time delay um, opening and time delay closing are the same. That is symmetrical. Or you can have asymmetrical timer where you've got different time sets for, for the delay for um, off is different from the on delay period. And these um, uh, cyclic timers are used in various applications as well. And some of them may have solid state circuits built within the device uh, to drive the electromagnetic relays in, within it. And this is the uh, operation, uh, the, the recycle operation cycle. So voltage is applied and then the delay period one begins and the output remains de-energized or off. And then at the time, at the second cycle um, or after the first delay, the off period, which we call the off period, the relay coil will energize and the second delay will begin. So uh, you've got this period, so it is off, the voltage is applied, and then there's a delay time until here, then <clears throat> it is closed, again it opens, it's closed, and you to continue operating in that pattern until um, uh, you switch it off or you change the design, the, the time slot. Okay, that uh, marks the end of the um, class. Do we have questions?